if there's any class in TF2 that's kind of known for being buggy, it'd be Spy. Yeah, it's Spy. But if there's a second one, it's still Spy, I tricked you. But uh, Pyro is definitely a contender. And you can probably tell by the sheer length of this video that there are a lot of documented Pyro bugs. More than any other class. Even more than Spy. Though I would probably argue that Spy's bugs are overall bigger and more potentially detrimental to the class as a whole. But in terms of numbers, Pyro easily wins. And had I made this prior to Jungle Inferno, this video would be even longer. Pyro was an absolute mess of a class before that. They're far from perfect now, but at least we don't have to worry about the flamethrower's range being determined by connection to the server. And that was a real thing. But alright, alright, enough stalling. We've got a lot of bugs to get to in my... Uh, four hour video essay on the philosophy of pyro bugs or something. So, uh, okay, let's go. But wait, how about a little bit more stalling? How about this weather? Have you heard about the Game Awards winner for best mobile game? Honkai Star Rail? It's got a new update with new maps and events. Wow! You can even swap between mobile, PC, or PlayStation 5 if you want to play at home or, or on the go or in your bed at home because you don't feel like getting up. And this update adds two new limited five star characters. Ron May, a Ice-type support character with the ability to increase speed and break effects. And Dr. Ratio. Yes, that is his real name. You better hope he doesn't reply to you on Twitter. Dr. Ratio is an imaginary-type character that gains buffs based on the debuffs of his enemies. All that along with a brand new story with a brand new space station map. And if you log into Honkai Star Rail by January 17th, 2024, you'll receive Dr. Ratio. This is going to be the first time they're giving out a limited 5-star character. And you can use my link here to download the game, and also use this redemption code to receive 50 Stellar Jade. So, uh, check it out. Our first Pyro bug is gonna say that the swing animation on third person for Pyros using an all-class melee weapon is delayed, causing the melee hit to register way before the animation is actually over. So with multi-class melee weapons like the Pan, there is in fact a very noticeable delay between when the Pan actually hits me and when it visually looks like it should. I mean, let's pause it, cause this is the frame where I actually got hit and it looks like the pyro barely even started the swing animation. So that is a pretty big delay. And for our next general pyro bug, it says that many times, after using the flamethrower and quickly switching weapons, flame particles will appear to shoot out of the flamethrower. These flames don't damage players and don't consume ammo. So this bug has been on the wiki since before the Jungle Inferno update in 2017. And that update did overhaul a lot of things about how flames work. So, I don't think I was able to fully recreate exactly what this bug was talking about, but I did find that if you tap the fire button and then immediately switch weapons, you will shoot out what is essentially an invisible puff of fire that also won't consume ammo, but will damage players. Here's how it looks with the flamethrower hitbox debug on, showing that if you switch right away, a few flame particles will come out, but they won't actually be visualized as fire. And you actually won't see the fire come out from third person either. It does require a little bit of precise timing, and you can't get a ton of damage out of this, but it does have a little bit of practical use. You get some damage out of the flamethrower without actually using any ammo. But as for the original bug, I guess it's kinda busted. I mean, these flames are invisible and they do deal damage, as opposed to being visible and not dealing damage. So it's like the exact opposite, and I guess we could call that busted. Afterburn in general even has its own section for bugs, with the first one claiming that a burning player will cease to take damage if the enemy who inflicted Afterburn changes teams, but will visually remain on fire for the default duration. And this one is also true. If the person who set you on fire changes teams, you will immediately stop taking damage, but the fire visual effect will still be there until it would have stopped normally. The next bug says that being set on fire and then switching to another team will cause the HUD Afterburn effect to remain there until the player disconnects, but the player will not save fire related responses or receive damage. And this one is not true. Switching teams while you're on fire will not keep the Afterburn screen effect. And that even sounds like it would be a really old bug, so in this case, it's just no longer true. Afterburn from the Dragon's Fury does not reduce direct medigun healing or resist shield effects by 20%. So, uh, the Dragon's Fury's description never actually mentions it has these effects on mediguns. But I guess the idea here is that if it's a stock ability and the Dragon's Fury lacks that, it should be listed. But for example, for something like the Vaccinator, the Flamethrower's Afterburn will reduce the shield effectiveness from 70% to 60%, but with the Dragon's Fury's Afterburn, it will keep its full effectiveness. And hey, what do you know? Air Blast also has its own unique section for bugs. And the first Air Blast bug says that reflected grenades, sentry rockets, and detonator flares all incorrectly inflict 85 to 170 self-damage. 
So, normally, rolling grenades lose a lot of their damage once they touch the ground, right? But if you air blast a rolling grenade, it becomes even more lethal than a direct hit. But only to you. For some reason, the damage increases dramatically, to the point where I'm surprised I've never actually noticed this in an actual match. And the same thing applies to sentry rockets, too. For example, from this range, the rocket normally did 64 damage, but when I reflected it to myself, it did 107. It's actually pretty tricky to pull off, but this does apply to the detonator as well. Also, something I find interesting is that the detonator can still be detonated by the pyro who fired it even after it's been air blasted. So it'll change colors, but the original pyro will still be the one who gets detonated. I'm not sure if that's a bug, but it does feel off. But anyway, what's even weirder about the original bug is that while air blast from the Dragon's Fury will also increase the self damage from these projectiles, it's significantly less than the other flamethrowers, which is very strange. But it's all true. Reflected flares from the Scorch Shot do not inflict radius damage upon hitting a non-player surface. So here, a Scorch Shot's explosion would be able to hit this heavy from this angle, but a reflected one will not because a reflected Scorch Shot's flare just doesn't explode at all. Even though the Pyro is credited for any kills given by a deflected Sticky Bomb that the Delman detonates, including the Delman himself, this has no effect on the domination counter if the Delman is not yet dominating the Pyro. However, if the Delman is dominating the Pyro, a kill from deflected Sticky Bombs will reset the counter. This is worded way more complicatedly than it really needs to be. And not all of it is true. Pyro isn't credited for their teammates being blown up by air blasted stickies like the bug seems to imply. I don't know if that used to be the case, but it's not now. However, Pyro is credited for air blasting stickies and having the Delman blow himself up. Though this can never lead to a domination by the Pyro. It doesn't matter how many reflect sticky kills you get, it won't ever dominate. But if the Delman is dominating you, you can get revenge that way. So most of this is true. Headshots with deflected arrows use the kill icon of normal headshots, as opposed to that of an arrow headshot. Now, this is what a headshot icon from an arrow normally looks like. And, and this was an intentional demonstration, I would never miss time an air blast. But here, you can see a reflected arrow headshot will still use a normal sniper rifle headshot kill icon. Enemies killed with reflected rocket launcher rockets do not increase killstreak or strange counters. This is half true, and half not true. Reflected rocket kills will increase strange counters. My flamethrower starts at 456, then after this reflect kill, it goes to 457. But my killstreak didn't go up, despite this also being a killstreak flamethrower. However, when the soldier himself is carrying a killstreak rocket launcher, it will increase the kill count. I've always wondered about this, because it's actually something I come across fairly frequently. Though reflecting seemingly any other kind of projectile will always counter the flamethrower's killstreak regardless. But also, if that soldier with a killstreak rocket launcher happens to be on a killstreak when you reflect his rocket, the kill feed will actually act as if you'd continued it. Here, going from a killstreak of 4 to the feed showing 5 even though the soldier had just died. Your killstreak will still only go up by 1 though. When using the air blast, enemies directly behind Pyro may be pushed away at certain angles. Yeah, the air blast hitbox is infamously pretty massive. And you really don't have to try very hard for it to push people away who are behind you. All you really have to do is look up or look down. You do have to basically be inside the Pyro's back for this to happen, so I can't imagine it coming into play very much in an actual match, but it is easy to do if you're purposely trying to set it up. Reflected rockets and grenades ignore the original weapon's splash radius attribute. This means that a reflected direct hit rocket, or anything with a smaller explosion, will have its normal splash radius, which is actually pretty nice for the Pyro. This also applies to the explosion penalty of things like the lock and load too, but if the reflected grenade does hit a surface, it will still shatter like normal. Well, now that we've got air blast bugs out of the way, maybe we could do something a little bit less buggy. Like the flamethrower! Oh. Yeah, like I said though, the flamethrower was way worse in the past. Like, maybe one of the buggiest weapons in the game. So it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's far from perfect. We still have plenty of bugs. Like the first one that says that the flamethrower's medigun heal and resist reduction is not actually 20% as stated in the patch notes. Healing is reduced by 50% with any of the mediguns, and by 100%, 100%, and 75% with level 1, 2, and 3 dispensers respectively. And this has been a weird stat since it was first introduced in Meet Your Match. Originally, it was supposed to be that direct damage reduced medigun healing by 25%. Then Jungle Inferno made it so that just Afterburn applied this effect, but for 20% instead. The thing is, it's never been 25% or 20%. 
Okay, for the shield reduction, it is, but never for the healing. As far as I'm aware, this is always straight up halved medigun healing. I'm not sure why they'd be so specific about changing the percentages for it to not change at all. Unless they meant it as, like, reduces medigun healing in general, and also resists shield effects by 20% as, like, a separate thing. But hey, it is what it is, and it's, it's 50%. Though it was never mentioned in the patch notes that this does also have an effect on dispensers. Dispensers will still reduce your burn time, so that's good. But yeah, they won't heal you at all if you're a level 1 or a level 2. Level 3 dispensers will heal you, but at a 75% reduced rate. And conceptually, I'm actually pretty okay with the idea of large healing reductions from Afterburn. Though a big part of me does also wonder how much of this was intentionally set up this way. At point blank, damage ramp up takes longer to reach its maximum damage, taking up to 2 seconds. This can be mitigated by looking a bit downward while attacking. Uh, yeah, I mean, looking at this side by side, you'll see that looking downward will reach over 100 DPS much faster. It's in about half the time as looking forward. So if you're that close, make sure to look down. When damage ramp up on any target begins, the first particle always deals maximum damage. So flames have a type of ramp up that, to my knowledge, is based on how frequently the target is being hit by fire in a certain time frame, and that ramp up will reset when you miss. But apparently, the first fire particle will always start at that maximum ramp up. And when we slow this down, we can see that the very first particle here deals 8 damage, when the following particles only increase the damage by 3. So it's true, and it's a very minorly beneficial bug. The flamethrower can be inspected while being fired. If you're already inspecting your flamethrower and then start firing it, it will cancel the inspect animation. But if you're firing it first and then start inspecting it, you can inspect it and burn people at the same time. Slaughter your enemies while admiring the beauty of your war paint. I don't have a war paint, but if I did, I would I'd be admiring it. And this does work with all of Pyrus primaries except for the Dragon's Fury. While deployed, the flamethrower emits a constant gas noise. Upon using a compression blast, this noise stops completely and does not resume until firing flames or switching weapons. The noise itself is very quiet and can be a bit hard to hear due to just ambient noise in general. But if we go to a completely silent map, like this box art map, you can definitely hear it. But like the bug says, Air Blast will stop the noise until you fire again or switch weapons. Take a listen. Flames can shoot over long distances if the pyro is using the detonator or the scorch shot to build up speed and is stuck inside a map surface or object. Huh, that's interesting. This is actually one of the few bugs that has a link to proof. With a video by some guy named Grandpa Swoo demonstrating it. Sounds like a nerd, but uh, in that video he does show that if you get stuck inside a map, like when the sign comes up on Badwater, you're still able to increase your velocity by repeatedly hitting yourself with a detonator. And doing so will continuously increase your flamethrower reach allowing it to hit crazy far away. If you actually had something to hit and the map wasn't blocking you, you could probably get pretty much infinite range this way. And visually, from the opponent's perspective, the flames actually don't look like they're being stretched. But from the perspective of the person doing it, you could straight up see how far they actually go. I guess you could hypothetically use this for some kind of exploit shenanigans, but you're also literally stuck inside a wall, so uh, who really cares? The degreaser's attribute, minus 66% afterburn damage penalty, is incorrect, as it actually deal 75% less afterburn damage when compared to the flamethrower. This is because the Jungle Inferno update increased the default afterburn damage from 3 to 4, but the attribute did not get updated. Rather than the damage penalty cleanly reducing 3 down to 1 pre-Jungle Inferno, it now goes from 4 to 1.36, which still rounds down to 1. So it's actually not a 75% damage penalty, and you can see that with mini crit afterburn from the degreaser because that does deal 2 damage. Where if it actually was a 75% damage penalty, mini crits still wouldn't round up to 2. I guess you could argue that maybe this was intentional specifically for mini crit afterburn, but more likely than not Valve probably just forgot to change it. And it's not like it really matters either way, but yeah the damage penalty is still 66%. The attribute, minus 66% afterburn damage penalty, also applies to any reflected projectiles afterburn, such as the flare gun, despite it normally dealing full afterburn damage. And yes it does! A reflected flare's afterburn damage will be reduced from 4 to 1 if it's deflected by the degreaser. But I also immediately noticed something else. The reflected afterburn duration seemed very short, 
It was only like 4 seconds, when flare guns normally burn for 7.5. I tested this with the flamethrower too, and the afterburn damage was normal, but it still had the reduced duration. And a reflected flare from the dragon's fury was reduced even further, only having one tick of afterburn damage. So it seems like flares all take on some attributes from the flamethrower that reflected them, both in terms of afterburn damage, but also duration. Though the Dragon's Fury is supposed to burn for 2.5 seconds, and it only burned for like half a second, so I don't know how to explain that. But uh, overall, the burn duration is going to be reduced no matter what. Now, the Phlogistonator, despite being a pretty simple weapon stat-wise, does actually have a lot of listed bugs. And the first one says that after activating Mf, followed by switching classes, the Mf glowing particle effect will be present when taunting. Though that is not true. If you activate Mf and switch class and then taunt, there will be no lingering effect. Mf gained is not reduced to reflect damage resistance. The Phlogistonator normally takes 300 fire damage to fill its meter. So for example, killing a full health sniper would normally only fill like a little over a third. But killing a danger shield sniper who resists fire will fill the Mf meter almost entirely. And the same thing goes for a dead ringer spy and especially against the Vaccinator Medic. But what I also found out that's not listed anywhere is that damage vulnerability also has an effect on this. Killing a full health heavy should always fill the meter because he has 300 health. But killing a heavy who has vulnerability from the stake and the warrior spirits won't fill the meter. Which is pretty interesting, and again that's not listed anywhere. So we discovered something new. In some cases, fire particles will still be in the air while activating Mumph will also be crit boosted. Strange wording aside, this has also been on the wiki for over a decade at this point. And it does say in some cases, so it might not be very common, but I could never get this to happen. The fire particles could be actively hitting another player when you taunt, but they would never crit. The phlogistonator and fire particles in general have gotten so many changes over the past 10 years, that I would be pretty comfortable in saying that this one probably doesn't happen anymore. And as far as I'm aware, there's never been any proof that it ever happened, so I'm okay calling it busted. If Mumf is activated and the round changes, the effect will continue until the Mumf bar is depleted. If you activate Mumf right before the next round is supposed to start, it won't continue until the next round. It just stops like it probably should. If the player is switched to the enemy team and the round ends with full Mumf, the charge particle effect and the client view will still be the old team's color. And it is, for like a split second, it evaporates pretty much immediately. And when you get Mf back again, it is the right color. So I mean, this one is true for like an extremely brief period, I guess. Using an action slot taunt with full Mf will cause a charge particle effect to disappear. And it does. When you have that crit effect thingy and you do another taunt, the effect will disappear. But it will come right back as soon as you switch weapons. If the player activates Mumph with this weapon, and then switches to another primary weapon via resupply or another method, the new weapon will retain the remaining crit boost gained from Mumph. This does also work with the Soda Popper and the Hitman's Heatmaker, and it will work with the Phlogisonator too. You can activate your Mumph, then immediately pick up a flamethrower off the floor, and you'll have both crits and the ability to air blast. Once the crits would normally end, it will still end, but that is pretty cool. And this can also be done with the resupply cabinet, but that's less fun. If the Pyro activates Mumph, and I feel like I've said Mumph like 37 times now, and receives any sort of knockback, the taunt will be interrupted, but not its invulnerability. This is because the invulnerable effect is set to number of seconds, as opposed to when the taunt finishes. So, the Phlogistonator is supposed to give you knockback immunity when you're taunting, to prevent this exact type of thing from happening. And most of the time, it works as intended. No matter how many times I tried to get this to fail, it wouldn't fail. But I also know for a fact that this can happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen semi-recently. But I just don't know what causes it to happen. Though the original bug description would make it seem like it happens easily from any type of knockback, but that part isn't the case. The Dragon's Furious projectile can go through thin walls such as setup gates when fired at the correct angle. I find that this wall on Pipeline is a good place to test these things out, because it seems like a lot of projectiles can go through it. And the Dragon's Furious projectile can do it too. Though I couldn't easily get it to go through setup gates. The attribute, deals 300% damage to burning players, is incorrect. The damage bonus applies to buildings and other non-player targets. 
This is because the base damage of the weapon is 75, and the damage is reduced against non-burning players. And I mean, yeah, the Dragon's Fury does deal 75 to buildings and stuff like that. Though I feel like maybe in this particular case, they might have worded it that way in the description because it was maybe a little bit more intuitive for it to deal more damage against burning players rather than less damage to non-burning ones. So possibly not a bug, but it is true either way. When killed slash killing via reflecting the weapon's projectile, this weapon shows a reflected rocket kill icon in the kill feed. And when getting a reflect kill with the fireball, it will in fact show a reflected rocket icon. The fireball projectile can become harmless by colliding with certain projectiles, specifically rockets, needles, huntsman arrows, rescue ranger bolts, flares, and the fireball spell. But this was actually fixed a few years ago, so luckily it doesn't happen anymore. But if you're curious as to what it looked like, I actually did demonstrate this in a video quite a while back. Uh, syringes in particular just absolutely disintegrated your fireball, which was kind of sad. But uh, now it's fixed. When equipping another primary weapon after equipping the Dragon's Fury and touching a resupply cabinet, a pressure meter will appear on the bottom right corner. And I remember noticing this pretty soon after the Dragon's Fury first came out. A pressure meter will show up when you switch weapons. Though I don't think going from loadout A with the flamethrower to loadout B with the Dragon's Fury will do it. I'm pretty sure it's just if you switch weapons in the same loadout and then touch the cabinet. But it does show up, and I actually kind of wish the Dragon's Fury had a functional pressure meter to begin with. I think it'd make it easier to know how soon you could air blast again. And I have to imagine at one point it was going to have a functional pressure meter, but obviously it was scrapped at some point along the way. When CL Flip View Models 1 is enabled, the primary fire still comes from the right side in the world view. So, when you flip your view models, projectiles will literally come from the left side of the screen. And that can make a difference when you're flying around a corner or something like that. But in the world view, they will also come from the left side of your character's body. However, for the Dragon's Fury, this isn't the case. They don't come from the left side. Even in first person with the flip view models, it still kind of looks like they're coming from the right side. So, for the Dragon's Fury, it seems like flipping the view models doesn't make a difference at all. The Dragon's Fury's projectile can collide with certain invisible map elements that it's supposed to pass through, effectively making the projectile disappear into thin air in some map locations. If you remember the Soldier Bugs video, this is actually the exact same problem that the Righteous Bison had. In some very specific locations, the projectile just kind of stops functioning. The fireball only collides with enemies when you're basically touching them. This bug mentions practically all of Watchtower as an example, and the Dragon's Fury and the Bison basically cannot be used on this map. It's, I mean, it's that bad. You're playing on ultra hard mode if you're trying to kill someone with the Dragon's Fury here. And it does also list the stairs leading up to the top tower in High Tower as an example, but as far as I can tell, the Dragon's Fury works fine on this map. I don't know if it means these stairs, these stairs, or these ramps, but it did work on all of them. But obviously, some other maps and some other locations aren't as lucky. The Flare Gun can self-damage the user if shot at the wall at extremely close proximity under a very specific angle. In such case, it deals up to 25 damage. If the user dies because of this, the kill icon will be that of the detonator. And ever since I learned about this a few years ago, I kinda just do it when I'm messing around during setup time. Once you get the right angle, it becomes very easy to replicate. All you have to do is stand right next to a wall, and at this angle, for some reason, you could damage yourself with a normal flare gun. And if you do kill yourself, it will in fact be the detonator icon. And this does also work with the man melter as well. I have no clue if there's any kind of practical use to this, like I don't know if you could use that damage for momentum or anything, but uh, if you feel like killing yourself with a weapon that you normally couldn't kill yourself with, well, the, this is the bug for you! Go get him, tiger! Being affected by the detonator's explosion will remove the visual effect of Jurati and bleeding from the user's screen. And yes it does. Screen effects like the yellow tint from Jurati and the red tint from bleeding will be removed by the detonator's explosion. This applies both to yourself, and to enemies hit by the detonation. When an enemy is hit with a detonated flare, the blood particles will come from where the flare detonated instead of the player. This is very subtle, and can easily be misidentified as part of the actual explosion. But yeah, blood will spray from the explosion itself, rather than from the person being hit. Firing the detonator underwater will not fire any flares or waste any ammo, but will immediately play the sound of a flare impacting a surface with no effect. And this one is also true, and can actually even be heard from the perspective of other players as well. Reload speed upgrades in Man vs Machine place the loaded flare outside of the detonator's model. 
And this last detonator bug is also true, kinda. When you increase your reload speed in Mandiver's machine, you'll notice that a flare model will very briefly become visibly stuck to the bottom of the gun. I think it might just be that the projectile from the reload animation is lingering around just a little bit longer than it should be. And despite only being listed on the detonators page, this actually applies to the flare gun and the scorch shot as well. When the man melter's projectile is reflected, it's reflected as a flare. So the man melter normally launches a flare with a very fancy laser particle effect, but once it's reflected, it will still just look like a normal flare. The critical hits counter does not show when the active weapon is not the man melter. And yeah, the crit counter is only shown when the man melter is actually out. Which, I mean, doesn't necessarily sound like a bug, but weapons with similar gimmicks like the Frontier Justice and the Diamondback do always have their counter visible at all times. Which would make it seem like the man melter should as well. Firing at least one time will cause the weapon to not fully go back to its resting position. Well, I don't know about firing once, but I guess because the man melter has no reload animation, when you fire the man melter and continue to hold down the fire button, you'll have your arms pulled back slightly further until you let go. Once you release the fire button completely, your arms will go back to the default resting position. While holding down the alt fire after having saved up charges, trying to fire while still holding the alt fire will instantly deplete the man melter of all its saved charges, and the crit counter will reset to zero. The weapon does not actually fire anything while this happens. So I actually used the man melter a decent amount, probably more than most people would, and this kind of blew my mind. I mean, it doesn't matter how many crits you have stored, if you're touching the right click when you try to fire, you'll just, you'll just lose all of it. And it's not even just a visual bug on the HUD, your crit count will just straight up reset to zero. You lose all of it! That's terrible! Luckily I've never done this by accident, but if you do, that sucks. Literally, cause like, it sucks in air, that's kind of the gimmick. You, you get the joke, I don't have to explain it to you. If a friendly pyro is inflicted by afterburn from the gas passer, and the pyro extinguishes the friendly pyro, they receive points in health, but not a stored critical. And this is partly true, if you extinguish a friendly pyro that's burning from the gas passer, you won't receive a crit, and you also won't receive health. The exact same thing actually happens if a friendly soldier ignites himself with the cow mangler too. And I'm pretty sure this is due to an old exploit fix that used to let you farm crits off of a friendly pyro that was damaging themselves with the detonator. Which would make sense why it wouldn't work with the cow mangler, but I'm not really sure why it wouldn't work with the gas passer, because for that one it's coming from an enemy. So that's kind of strange, but yeah, you can't get a crit that way. If the player taunts with the scorch shot and is moved, the projectile will still fire from its original place. And this doesn't seem to be true. I mean, general knockback will cancel the taunt, so that doesn't really work. And even if you're teleported mid-taunt right as you're about to fire, it won't fire from its original place. So, pretty sure that one's busted. If the player fires the last flare and taunts, the player will still be able to do the taunt kill. The Scorch Shot consumes 1 ammo when the taunt is used, so hypothetically you shouldn't be able to do the taunt with 0 ammo. But if you fire your last flare and then taunt immediately afterwards, you will still be able to fire a flare with that taunt despite having no ammo left. Firing a critical hit with a Scorch Shot flare caused the following shots fired with the Execution Kill Taunt to deal only critical hit damage of 59 instead of the full taunt damage of 400. This effect lasts indefinitely and is removed by dying, switching class, or sometimes by making normal attacks with a scorch shot or other weapons. In this instance, I just get a random crit with a scorch shot, and then after that, every crit I fire from the taunt becomes a crit that deals the standard crit damage. And that includes that close range, where it should normally be dealing taunt kill damage. So uh, this means that if you get a random crit, and then after that you choose to only fire it from the, the taunt kill, you can get crit scorch shot flares indefinitely. Though as far as I could tell, just firing a normal shot afterwards would always seem to fix this. Now, in terms of sheer number of listed bugs, I think the Thermal Thruster has everything else for Pyro Beat. And it actually might have more documented bugs than anything else we've covered in this series so far. I mean, a lot of them are minor, so I probably wouldn't call it the buggiest weapon overall or anything like that, but I do think it's worth noting. And, uh, for example, the first one says that, despite what the description suggests, the pyro can launch backwards by using the charge while moving backwards. And, uh, yeah, you could just jetpack jump backwards if you want to, despite the description saying that it launches the pyro in the direction they're aiming. This is beneficial to the thermal thruster, and honestly, if it's a bug, I wouldn't want it fixed. The thermal thruster is always deactivated in the loadout menu, whether or not the animation is playing. 
Normally the thrusters on the thermal thruster should always be out when it's the active weapon, but in the loadout menu they're not. When the player has models enabled in the HUD, the thermal thruster will appear as red regardless of the team, and this has bugged me for 6 years. When the player dies with the thermal thruster equipped, the player will still have it on their back, and there will also be another one dropped that can be picked up. When you die with the thermal thruster equipped and active, you will miraculously spawn an extra jetpack that can be picked up while still also having that one attached to your back. Again, this weapon has a lot of bugs, but most are super minor. Sometimes the thermal thruster will not appear on other players who have it equipped. I find that this is particularly true for players who picked up the thermal thruster off the ground. In that case, it seems to not show up more often than not. The thermal thruster may disappear on disguised spies. And again, it seems to almost never show up on disguised spies. Even if the spy pretends to have it active, the pyro will be holding their hands like they have the thermal thruster, but there will be nothing on their back. Despite the April 12, 2018 patch fixing an issue with the thermal thruster's animation, if the pyro switches weapons when falling from a high place, the pyro will be in a reference pose until they reach the ground. That update added a neat little stomp animation when the pyro falls from far enough after doing a blast jump. The problem is that if you switch off the thermal thruster at any point during that animation, the pyro will A pose until you hit the ground. If the pyro dies while the thermal thruster is active, it'll still appear in its activated animation despite the pyro holding a different weapon. And yeah, if you die with it active, the thrusters will stay out when you respawn even if you have your primary or melee active. It's only a visual thing though, and it can be fixed just by switching back to the thermal thruster again. If a pyro picks up a weapon while the thermal thruster is active, some of its attributes will be retained, letting the player take less fall damage and giving them the ability to stomp on players by landing on them. Okay, it's important to note that this doesn't just happen by picking up another secondary with the thruster active. If you just do that, then the attributes won't carry over. You have to pick up another secondary during the actual jump, and if you do it correctly, then yes, the reduced fall damage and the stomp mechanics will carry over. Though what they don't tell you is that if you do this, it comes with the drawback of hearing the flying sound constantly the whole time. And that'll probably be enough to annoy you into not doing it. But what's funny is that if a quick fix medic at any point heals a thermal thruster pyro when they blast jump, the same effect will apply to that medic permanently until they die. And that's a pretty fun bug. If a pyro uses a charge while above water, the charge animation and the swimming animation will play at the same time while the pyro is moving. But from what I've seen, the swimming animation doesn't play at all. Instead, you're just constantly bombing up and down while doing the flying animation. I mean, to me, it doesn't seem like the pyro is doing any kind of swimming animation. It's not kicking its legs or doing anything associated with swimming. So, uh, there's a bug there, but it's just not really as described. Upon taunting with a the thermal thruster, the pyro's default oxygen tank appears while the animation plays out, causing clipping with the weapon and disappears once the animation ends. Yeah, the tank on pyro's back will magically come back as soon as you start the thermal thruster taunt. It's still mostly covered up, so I actually never noticed it until now, but uh, it, it's definitely there. If you get stunned at the same time you activate the thermal thruster, you'll be unable to move for the duration of the stun. This was actually a bit tricky to pull off. The first time I tried it, I jumped right as I was scared by the ghost, and I was able to move around just fine. But the second time, with seemingly the exact same general setup, I jumped right as I was scared, and I was locked into place when I landed. So that's strange, but it definitely can happen. Being soaked by the gas passer, then jumping with the rocket jumper or the sticky jumper, will still light the user on fire. This is true, and apparently, according to the bug description, is due to the gas effects triggering based on what the game considers taking a hit. Which includes things like harmless explosions and fall damage. The gas passer does not appear when inspected from the backpack menu. And no, no it does not. Also, to get this out of the way now, neither does the hot hand. The gas passer can be thrown through any wall given the player is close enough. At first I thought this just meant that the gas effect would go through walls, which it can, but no, you could also just straight up chuck the entire can through some walls. But also, the gas cloud effect itself will seemingly go through any wall. And that includes spawn doors too, so uh, you could cover enemies in gas while they're still in spawn, if you really want to. 
The gas passer on the hands of the player, while in third person, will constantly go up and down while said player is currently moving. But it doesn't seem to. The only thing close to this I could find is that when you stop moving, the gas can will do this little bob. Not really sure why it does that, but it will only do it once and only when you stop moving. When you're running around though, everything looks fine. When reflected by an enemy pyro boosted by the Kritzkrieg, the gas passer's color will not change. See, uh, the thing here is that it, it does change. If you're crit boosted and reflect a gas passer, the, the color changes like it should. And even if you reflect a crit boosted gas passer, it also still changes color. So, uh, yeah. A sniper wearing the Darwin's Danger Shield cannot be ignited by the gas passer. And a Danger Shield sniper will not be ignited by the gas passer, and neither will a Spicicle Spy. But, uh, here's the thing. D why should they be? Maybe conceptually it seems like maybe they should be, but the gas passer's description never mentions being able to bypass afterburn immunity. All it says is that it can ignite pyros, so uh, I don't think there's any reason to think this is a bug at all. Finally on to melee weapons, and the back scratcher's one bug says that the crusader's crossbow is unaffected by the stat minus 75% health from healers on wearer. Unlike things like the equalizer or the escape plan, the crossbow will still heal its full amount to a back scratcher pyro. Which of course is beneficial to the pyro, but uh, I'm not really a fan of that. I, I kind of like it when downsides work as they're intended to. The third degree also has one bug that says that if a player getting healed by the amputator's healing taunt gets hit by the third degree, the medic will as well. And uh, if you watch the pyro max damage video, then you know that we were able to use that to good effect there. But uh, despite not literally being a medigun beam, the amputator's taunt has the same effect on the third degree, allowing the medic to be hit if any of the people he's healing are hit. Though it is worth noting that if the medic is the one hit, the third degree won't transfer it to the people he's healing with the amputator. And the Hot Hand, despite being an incredibly simple weapon, actually has the most bugs of any of Pyro's melee weapons. Including this weird bug that was both introduced and fixed during the making of this video. When this year's Smithsmith update happened, they somehow made it so Pyro's default glove was clipping through the Hot Hand. And this was fixed not long after that, but I also happen to have recorded a lot of the gameplay for this video in that window. So I captured a little time capsule here for that uh, week when the hot hand looked like an absolute mess. That's kind of cool, right? I don't think many people notice this because uh, who uses the hot hand? But the hot hand's first documented bug claims that the attribute minus 20% damage penalty is incorrect. The damage penalty is minus 57% per slap or minus 14% if both slaps hit. Yeah, the hot hand is a very weird weapon because every attack swings twice. And those slaps will only deal 28 damage, which is 57% less than the fire axe damage of 65. And if you combine both slaps damage into one, it would be 56, which is 14% less than 65, and still not the 20% damage penalty the description says it is. Though it would be a 20% damage penalty off of a scout's melee base damage of 35, and that does kind of swing faster too, so maybe it uses that as a base? Not really sure why it would, but it would kind of make sense. If the player assists a slap kill, the kill icon will not be highlighted in the kill feed like other kills and assists. And this is the exact same bug we saw with the holy mackerel in the scout video. While I am still credited for the assist here, when he's killed by a slap, the kill notice won't be highlighted like it normally should be. Taunt kills with the hot hand will announce a slap kill in the second kill feed. And they sure do. That's not a slap kill. The Hot Hands view model is not affected by the Use Minimized View Models option. And Minimized View Models do not have an effect on the Hot Hand. Upon selecting the Hot Hand on Pyro's loadout menu and then switching back to another melee weapon that's for all classes, the right hand will be elevated more than normal when holding the other weapon. This is because the right arm is slightly more elevated when using the Hot Hand, however the game doesn't return to the proper right hand position after going back to an all class melee weapon. This only happens in the loadout menu, and is incredibly subtle to the point where I'm surprised anybody noticed at all. Here's Pyro holding an all-class melee weapon. Now here's Pyro with the hot hand equipped. Now here's Pyro holding an all-class melee weapon after having the hot hand equipped. Pyro's hand is ever so slightly higher. Scandalous. It's a lot easier to notice in editing when you have these back-to-back -back with each other, but when you're actually switching weapons, I'm genuinely surprised anybody noticed. So uh, kudos to whoever found that first. The glove won't appear on a pyro's hand after death. And the hot hand will disappear when the pyro dies with it active. It's one of those few weapons that can't be picked up off the ground. 
During Halloween events, the Thriller Taunt has a chance to replace the Hadoken Taunt when it does not normally replace taunt kills. So, uh, apparently Thriller isn't supposed to replace taunt kills. During Halloween, there's supposed to be a 40% chance that every time you taunt, it ends up being the Thriller. And when you have the Hot Hand out, it still has a chance to become the Thriller Taunt. But I also got that with the Shotgun, which has the same taunt kill. And, uh, I did try this out a few more times. I, I couldn't get the Thriller with the Thermal Thruster, or with the Flare Gun, or with the Sandman, but I could get it with Heavy's Fists, and I could get it with the Spice Knife. So, uh, you know what? I really don't know for this one. It seems like Thriller can replace taunt kills, sometimes, for, for some weapons. Okay, we've we finally made it. We're on the home stretch. It's been a long road, but we, we made it to the Pyro Achievement Bugs. And uh, the first one claims that the Pyromancer Achievement does not show progress if viewed through Steam. That achievement is normally earned for dealing 1 million fire damage, and that progress will not be shown if you do view it through Steam. Many Pyro Achievements can be earned by using Flaming Huntsman Arrows and by the Cow Mangler 5000. Alright, we tried this in Soldier Bugs with the Cow Mangler, and we'll try it with the Huntsman here too. So, here's me trying to get Baptism by Fire for making 10 burning enemies jump into water, and there's no progress there. Here's me trying to get Cooking the Books, nothing there. Trying to get Dance Dance Emulation, I get a Sniper Achievement, but I don't make any progress on the Pyro one. I couldn't get God of Light. Spontaneous Combustion was also a no. And at this point, especially with no documented proof, I'm pretty confident in saying this is both busted for the Cow Mangler and the Huntsman. The Pyrotechnics achievement can be earned through any invulnerability effects, and not only from Uber Charge. The achievement Pyrotechnics is normally earned for killing three enemies in a single Uber Charge. And this bug description does list spawn Uber effects and Capture the Flag crit boosts as example of things that will trigger the achievement. But here, if I get three kills after capturing the flag, I'll get the achievement Campfire, but I won't get Pyrotechnics. And if I kill these people during the Manpower Uber spawn effects, I'll get Weenie Roast, but still no Pyrotechnics. The Arsonist achievement can be earned by destroying sappers with the Homewrecker, Maul, or Neon Annihilator. And Arsonist is normally earned for destroying 50 engineer buildings. And while sappers are also technically considered buildings, the achievement does specify engineer buildings. But yes, either way it is true. And finally, our last pyro bug says that the Attention Getter achievement doesn't count pyros, regardless of whether or not they've been covered by the Gas Passer, and does count snipers wearing the Darwin's Danger Shield. Attention Getter is normally earned for igniting 100 players with a flare gun. And Pyros will never count towards this achievement, even if they're covered in gas and can be ignited. But both Danger Shield Snipers and Spicicle Spies will count towards the achievement, despite not being ignited. That's it! That, that's it! It's, it's over! The longest video I've made so far! About Pyro Bugs, of all things. I guess I'm not too surprised. I mean, Pyro does have a lot of weapons, and uh, has always been known for being kind of wonky. And, and you know what? Despite the sheer number of bugs here, I don't think Pyro came out as bad as I might have thought. Still very buggy, but not what it used to be. And hey, that's a step up. Well, we can be proud of Pyro for being a semi-functional class now. But the last class for this main part of the series is going to be the Engineer, and that will also likely be a pretty long video with all of his buildings and everything like that. So hey, maybe Engineer will give Pyro a run for its money in terms of video length. We'll have to wait and see. But if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons like Varric, Captain Forks, Eggox, Colonel, Probably Vinegar, Caponicus, Kelso the Pirate, Pillsman's Fox, Some Crazy Idiot, Azan, She Shells, Salt God, Lavi, Tope, Time Consuming, Man 344, Nolan 46, and Melodici. Alright, peace out, dogs.